North Carolina Prepper here. This will be part two of how to use a compass in regards to using it with interaction with a map. This is a very important lesson and you should learn it well and you should check other resources on this to get maybe a better overview of this. When you use both a compass and a map it's really good and you'll be able to navigate safely and accurately in any terrain that you've never been in before without following trails. It will take some training and experience though. I'm not going to cover map reading here. Um, you could consult a lot of other sources for that because that's a big lesson and I, I really don't have time to get into that right now. But with this lesson, a little common sense, you'll be able to follow what a map says. <clears throat> a very quick summary of what we're going to go over here is how to align the edge of the compass with the starting and finishing points, <coughs> rotating the compass housing, housing and orientating arrow, and the lines of the north points of the map, rotating the map and compass together until the red end of the compass needle points north, following the direction of travel arrow on the compass, keeping the compass needle aligned while orientating um, with the orientating arrow on the housing. So if you look at our compass again, we have the orientating arrow, the compass needle, the direction of travel, your orientating lines, which will actually be used in this lesson, and the compass housing and how to align it. The principles of this are pretty much like the first video. But this time, <coughs> excuse me, you're using the map to tell you which way is correct instead of using your intuition. Instead of saying, oh, I'm going south or whatever, you're going to say, I'm going to base camp B or hiking spot B or whatever. Okay, first off, let's take our map. In our first example, we look at the map that's basically made for orienting, orienting and it, it's very detailed, unlike the one I've written here. But let's look at this fictitious map. Um, it's pretty bad. I'm not a cartographer and I'm not an artist, but you'll get the idea. We want to go from the, the trail crossing at B, or A, excuse me, from A, and get to point B over here, which is our campsite or where the water is or whatever. We're going to say that's a lake over there, though. So on the side of the lake where all our friends are for camping. Of course, <clears throat> to use this method successfully, you have to make sure you're really at point A. And one way to do that is you, know, you take a bearing of the highest marks ahead of you. For example here. You think that you're, you're at point A and you look off in the distance at this landmark. We'll call this Mountain A or Landmark 1. And this one over here will be Landmark 2. You'll say, well, at this direction is this degrees. It's a bearing of like say 280 or whatever, and draw a line to where you think along that along that uh, compass heading, and then you'll draw one from the other one down here at landmark B, and where those two lines intersect like this, it shows exactly where you're at on the map. <clears throat> what you need to do is to point your compass on the map so that the edge of the compass is pointing up is starting at A. It's point at A. The edge of the map must be using is the edge that is parallel to the direction of travel arrow. Then you put B somewhere along the same edge like this. Of course you could use the direction arrow itself or one of the parallel lines but usually it's more convenient to use the edge because um, you can draw on it if necessary. At this point, some instructors will say that you should use a pencil and draw a line along the course. I, I recommend against that because first, it takes a lot of time. Second, it offers no enhance enhancement <coughs> in the accuracy of the method. Um, if you have wet weather, it may destroy your map because you're pulling it out. If it's windy, you may lose it. You're going to have it tied down. You should keep your map sealed in a transparent bag. 
There are specific map bags for this. I use a Ziploc baggie myself. But, you know, whatever, up to you. Just keep it, you know, tied up so it doesn't get blown away or rained on or wet or blown away or whatever. The most importantly is, though, these lines can, can cover up important details in your map, such as markings. Um, <clears throat> this is the time you need to be careful. The edge of the compass rather than the direction of your arrow may point from A to B. But again, if you do this wrong, you'll walk off in the exact opposite direction that you want to go. So take a second look. Uh, beginners often make that mistake as well. <coughs> okay, let's go. I want you to put the compass steady on the map. What you're going to do next is that you're going to align the orientating lines here and the orientating line arrow with the meridian lines on the map. Those are the lines that go north and south. For, for the sake of this, this map, we're going to say that this map is drawn, these, these lines here are magnetic north. So we're not going to go in declination all that on this. Just say this is a magnetic north. Okay, while you have the edge of the compass carefully aligned from A to B, now you're going to rotate the, the compass housing so that the orientating lines in the compass housing are aligned with the meridian lines on the map. Just like this. During the process of lining it, don't worry about where the needle goes or whatever. That's, that's not important right now. <clears throat> there are a number of serious mistakes that can be made here. Let's take the problem of going with the opposite direction first. B absolutely sure you know where north is on the map. In this case, it'll be the top of the map because I drew it to magnetic north. And be sure that the orienting arrow is always pointed towards the north on the map. Okay, so that'd be up here at the top, just like that. <clears throat> Normally, in most maps, you see north will be on the top of the map. It's possible to mistake that and let the orienting needle point towards the south on the map. I, a lot of times I'll have map books or whatever, that's what I use, but I always make sure at the bottom of the map to check the orientating marks or the uh, magnetic declination and all that and make sure I've got north. <clears throat> okay, and then keep an eye on the edge of the compass and make sure it, it isn't going along. If the edge of the compass, bleh, if the edge of the compass isn't going along the line from A to B, your, your destination, Yet to finish turning the comp when you finish turning the compass housing, you will have an error in your direction. And this can take you way, way off course. Be sure you have the compass housing right. Um, you may take the compass away from the map now and hold it, because now you know that you have this bearing is where you have to go. And you just take your azimuth reading or bearing off the housing from where the housing meets the direction window here. Be sure the housing doesn't change before you reach your target. Uh, the final step is similar to what we did before. You hold the compass in your hand, and you have to hold it quite flat so the compass needle can turn. Uh, then turn itself, um, turn yourself while holding it flat, and then take a reading and make sure the compass housing doesn't turn again. But just make it tell that the compass needle gets back to north. It's always facing north when you're walking. And then look at something far in distance, like a tree. So we'll use this drawing here. And assume that tree is on your right bearing. You walk towards that tree. And when you get to that tree, you'll be on course. You take another reading and do something else in the distance and walk to it. And, you know, I, I walk probably a couple hundred yards or something far, you know, and then go there. Um, when I do my contest, I'm going to have you go to, like, walk so many yards and then take a bearing, or go a bearing, like whatever degrees, and then walk some yards and go another degrees. And basically I'm going to hide something out there, and it'll be like a gift card or something for somebody. Or they can call in or message me, I'll send them a gift card. I was going to, you know, just give away a bunch of ammo, but that could have got really expensive real quick to what people wanted, so we're going to go with that. But that's another story for another lesson. So basically that's the basics of using a compass on a Mac. It's really simple.
Okay, um, that's North Carolina Prepper. Sorry it took so long to get this out. I've been busy at jury duty and a lot of personal things. That's all done now, so their videos are going to be coming, you know, one or two a week. Probably three a week, hopefully. We'll see. But anyway, North Carolina Prepper, please uh, rate and subscribe, and have a very great day.